Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Aloha. I'm Marcia Joyner, and this is Community Matters. And we have started a series of programs with candidates from as far away as Hilo up to Ka Kauai and everything in between. And it is a project so that you, our audience, gets to meet most of the candidates. Of course, we can't do all, but most <laughs> of them. And so today, we are talking to Representative uh, Todd, Chris Todd, from Hilo. Not quite South Point, but the Big Island. Pretty close, yeah. Pretty close. <laughs> In fact, Chris, how, how close are you to South Point? Um, it's, it's probably 40 or 50 miles. Oh. It's about an hour and a half, I think. Okay, so you take. are pretty close. Yeah. yeah. So, Chris mm -hmm. is a coach and um, a father and was really paramount in this new economic development of Hilo, Hilo Town. So, welcome, Chris. Welcome. And tell us about Chris. Sure. Uh, well, thank you for having me here. Uh, so, a new father. Uh, yes. We just, uh, my wife gave birth uh, a little bit over a month ago. Uh, her name is Ruby uh, Ren Todd. And Ruby. we also have a Japanese name in there, too, because yes, you know, that's of you know, part of my heritage. And her, so, her Japanese name is Kasumi. And uh, so, she came a little bit early. She's a tiny little thing, but everything's uh, going well. Perfect health and everything. Can't complain. Most of them are tiny. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so she's just starting to round out a little bit now. Yeah. <laughs> she's pretty thin, you know, when she's born. But, but everything's going really well. And uh, so, you know, doing my best to try and balance that and, you know, my legislative responsibilities, coaching, and also my first campaign since I was appointed a couple years ago. Yeah. So tell us, you were appointed how and why? Right. Uh, so about uh, a little bit over a year and a half ago, uh, my representative, uh, Cliff Suji, passed away. And he passed away uh, pretty shortly after the general election. So he had already won, um, I think it was probably his uh, seventh term, like ever. something yes. like that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, you know, obviously it was a very unfortunate circumstance. You know, Rep Suji was a really good man, very genuine person. Um, and so I had just at that point kind of decided to get involved in politics. Um, you know, mostly because I was really upset with kind of how things were evolving at the national level and wanted to get more involved. Um, but it just happens that the day I was meeting with my family to kind of talk over uh, that, that day, right, Suji passed away. So I kind of deferred to my parents and my, my family, and, and they said, put your name in. You're not going to get appointed. <laughs> but um, do it anyway. Right. But yeah, do it anyway. It's, it's good to let people know you're interested, and it'll be a valuable learning experience. And so it, it wasn't expected, um, but I did get appointed um, you know, by Governor Ige, and uh, you know, it's been really rewarding so far through two years. So... Now, tell us about the area mm -hmm. that you represent, the district. Sure. I, I think, you know, I don't know if there's like a real good uh, way to describe it, but I guess the way I describe it when I'm uh, back in Hilo is it's everything in Hilo except for Kamwana, which is this kind of Mauka, kind of North Hilo, and uh, Wainaku, which is North Hilo. Um, so, you know, I've heard it described as Hilo proper in a way because you basically have, you know, the downtown kind of core of Hilo. You have Banyan Drive, uh, Keokaha, and Paneva, the two major Hawaiian homesteads. And you have almost all of uh, Waikea in that district. So what are the real the issues? Now, we talked about mm -hmm. your economic development and revitalization. Right. Tell us what that is. Yeah, so this is something that uh, can be difficult to explain. And it, it certainly took me a long time um, over the last two years to really get comfortable uh, with a lot of the concepts involved. So uh, for the last 20 or so years, the Hilo business community has been trying to get uh, a bill like this passed. And uh, the reasons are very complex. But to basically, like, short story, uh, a lot of local businesses in Hilo were destroyed by the most recent tsunami. Yes. 
and the state forced those businesses to sell their land oh. and to move on to these state leases because they, deci they decided you're not going to have any more development in that area, which is reasonable. Oh, um, in, the, in the tsunami area? In that area. tsunami area. Oh, okay. Uh, so the side effect, though, is that these leases are capped. They can't extend past a certain date. And, uh, you know, on a statewide level, you don't want people to have infinite, you know, years on their lease or anything like that. But in Hilo, what that's meant is that we have all these businesses that are in danger of shutting down or moving out of Hilo because they can't extend their leases. And there's no private land available that has that industrial zoning. Uh, so this is our attempt to allow for a way for them to extend their lease, but you know, balance that with the public good. So they have to provide a substantial improvement plan, be willing to invest you know, what's going to be on the order of hundreds of thousands of dollars or more into their property to improving these properties. Um, because right now, one of the major problems is if you have 10 years or less left on your lease, you can't get any financing from banks. So a lot of the roofs are rusted out and there's leaks and a lot of the buildings are really falling apart without that financing. So your, the bill that the governor signed mm -hmm. when it was last week or so, Yeah. so then that allows them more time on the lease? Is that what happened? Uh, so basically we, we, didn't, um, we didn't usurp you know, the DLNR's uh, authority because they manage these leases. So businesses can apply for a lease extension and part of that lease extension process is they need to be willing to commit uh, substantial uh, improvements to their property. And then from that point, DLNR still has the ability to say yes or no. Um, but it does at least give them a, a way to do that, provided, hey, they've been good tenants. They're, they're really like, a lot of these are kind of local institutions. Some of these businesses are well over 100 years old and are on their third or fourth generation. So we want to help preserve that and not have these businesses forced out of Hilo. Is um, is that part of the character, keeping the character of Hilo Town? Definitely, Hilo is a really unique place. Um, I think you know, for me, I found this really interesting statistic, which is if you look at you know our population over the age of 80, 85, it's about 90 percent Japanese. But if you look at the population, you know, at uh, age uh, under 10, it's about 95 percent mixed. And what that tells me is that you've had a local community there for a really long time. And a lot of the local families have intermarried. You know, people in Hilo have been there for most of their entire lives, if, if not multiple generations. And we want to try to preserve that small business uh, character of Hilo. We don't want big box stores to just come in and, and you know, run over uh, our community that way. So this is a way to preserve that and allow these uh, longer extensions. Now, do you have, other than the Merry Monarch, mm -hmm. other tourists? I know the Main Street mm -hmm. project, I remember that. Yeah, you know, I, I think, I think you know, tourists who visit Hilo, they like it. It, it has a small town feel to it. Um, we have, you know, obviously it's, it's a very beautiful place. It's very, you know, green. Right. Uh, there's a lot of waterfalls and that sort of thing. Um, but what we've struggled with is historically, um, and especially in recent years, is we don't have the hotel room capacity. So, you know, even for an event like Mary Monarch, those hotel rooms are booked out months in advance. So a lot of times visitors, instead of you know, having a lot of that money flow into the Hilo economy, they're staying in Waikoloa or staying in Kona um, or only coming over for a day or two. So uh, that's, another, that's another effort that's kind of you know, tied to this is we're, we're trying to uh, find a way to kind of revitalize that Banyan Drive area. Yeah. And that isn't necessarily tied into this legislation, but it's part of that larger conversation. So, well, so that's the big picture, I guess. Is yeah, definitely. Is. Now, if you put more hotels, mm -hmm. then you will encourage more tourism. What does that do to the character? Right. And, and I, the small yeah. businesses. Uh, what, yeah. what happens? Uh, and it's definitely a delicate balance. And we're, we're trying our best to preserve, you know, our, our local, you know, small town feel, while also just allowing for some economic revitalization. Um, so I think, you know, like the most recent um, effort, which has been very positive, is that we had uh, a new uh, lessee for what's now called the Grand Naniloa Hotel. Oh, yeah. And, you know, that's a hotel that, you know, when I, when I was a little kid, it was already old. Um, <laughs> but it was, you know, it was, but it was good. And uh, you know, over the last, you know, 20 or so years, it really fell into disrepair. Mm -hmm. A lot of the rooms, um, I think, I believe an entire wing was basically just inoperable. Uh, so now that we have a new lessee who's willing to commit substantial money into improving it, it still maintained the character of that hotel. It's the same footprint, 
but now you know it's it's uh, it's very nice and tourist friendly, um, and they've done a good job of tying that into kind of uh, some some of our uh, local culture also. So it's it's delicate, and we don't want to go too far in in that direction, but we we do need a little bit you know more of that economic development than we currently have. And they always show the Queen Liliuokalani Gardens. Well, whenever you advertise the Big Island, they show the Queen Liliuokalani Gardens. Right. So where is that in relationship to Hilo? So it's kind of, uh, I guess it's it's not in the center because it's on the coast, but it's really central uh, to to my district and to Hilo, and it's it's right next to Ben. It's part of Banya Drive, basically. So you have our our two kind of major hotels, which are small if they're anywhere else in the state. Um, and you have huge, you know, Liliuokalani Gardens, which is also next to this uh, area uh, called Coconut Island, and that's where you know everyone goes and swims uh, when they're little kids and that kind of stuff. Um, so part of part of the larger conversation, because we want this to be a big picture uh, idea, is I'd personally like to see Liliuokalani Gardens expanded. You know, right now if you cross the street, there's a, a driving range that's not really used uh, very often, and we have a golf course that's not really used very often. So I think there's an opportunity as part of uh, that economic development. Maybe, hey, maybe we have an additional hotel in that area, but as a way to balance that out, we really expand the local Atlantic gardens, which is where everyone goes to walk their dogs and yes. have picnics and that sort of thing. So when, what would that do if you expand it to mm -hmm. a tourism? And I, I, get, I think mm, what yeah. I, where I'm going with that is that Almost every other part of the state, people are complaining. What? Yes, we mm -hmm. need tourism. However, it does something to the footprint. So, how do you feel about that? Yeah. If you expand, then what? Sure. I I think you know when we look at the statewide, I think we're we're probably reaching near that capacity. Uh, capacity. I think you know if when I talk to people who've been around longer than I have, they. You know, 10 million was always seen as kind of a theoretical limit, and we're very, very close, close to that. Yeah. Um, but I do believe that there's an opportunity, uh, maybe selfishly for Hilo, to take some of that tourist uh, population and just shift it a little bit. <laughs> now, it doesn't need to be dramatic, you know, any, but anything would be helpful. Um, but if, if we expand that capacity, events like Mary Monarch have an opportunity to, uh, to grow and to really flourish. Um, because we have better accommodations and it, it can it can be uh, perpetuated in a kind of more positive way. Well, we need to take a break, and when we come back, I would like to talk about the other parts of the economy and the small businesses and what have you. So we'll be right back. Do you want to be cool? Like me? If so, watch my show on Tuesdays at 1 called Out of the Comfort Zone. I sang this song to you because I think you either are cool or have the potential to be seriously cool. And I want you to come watch my show where I bring in experts who talk all about easy strategies to be healthier, happier, build better relationships, and make your life a success. So come sit with the cool kids at Out of the Comfort Zone on Tuesdays at 1. See you there. Hello, my name is Stephanie Mock, and I'm one of three hosts of Think Tech Hawaii's Hawaii Food and Farmer series. Our other hosts are Matt Johnson and Pamai Weigert, and we talk to those who are in the fields and behind the scenes of our local food system. We talk to farmers, chefs, restaurateurs, and more to learn more about what goes into sustainable agriculture here in Hawaii. We are on at Thursdays at 4 p.m., and we hope we'll see you next time. Aloha. I'm Marcia Joyner, and this is Community Matters. This is part of a series that Think Tech is doing as we talk to the candidates who are running for office and that are in the primary, which is August 11. So we're talking to candidates from Hilo to Kauai and everything in between. And today we are talking to Rep. Todd, Chris Todd from Hilo. So Chris, we were talking all about Hilo, and most people think of the Merry Monarch. That's, when you say Hilo, that's what everybody else thinks. And 
honestly, if you don't book now, you can't get a flight in March. Yeah. It, it just doesn't happen. People come from everywhere, bring their products to sell, from all over Hawaii anyway. Mm -hmm. They bring their products to sell. What does that do to the local people and the small businesses? Are some of those vendors small businesses? Yeah, I think it's a, it's a pretty good blend. I would say most, uh, probably a pretty big majority of the products that are offered, we have all of these uh, local craft fairs, um, and you know we have a lot of food vendors, not necessarily at the Merry Monarch, but at these kind of attached events right. nearby. Um, and and, that, well, that's what I mean, yeah. the carryover. Yeah, so I would say mo most of that ties back into East Hawaii. You know, there's a lot of uh, local businesses, you know, um, whether they're selling, you know, fabrics or, you know, little crafts, necklaces. Um, but also, you know, we have, we have Sig Zane, who has, you know, this is obviously a very big time of year for them. And this past opportunity, or uh, this past year. What is Sig Zane? Sig Zane is a local designer. Oh. Yeah. Oh, uh, that, yeah. the pretty one. Yeah, yes, exactly. Right, one, right, right. Yeah. Very, very vibrant Beautiful. fabrics, yeah. that sort of thing. Um, so this past year, um, I actually went to Sig Zane. They had like this uh, kind of product launch, you know, the week of uh, Mary Monarch. And I mean, it's, it's, it was, yes. it's pretty impressive. I mean, I don't even, it probably guaranteed as a fire code violation or something, but everyone's packed into that <laughs> store uh, trying to buy, you know, the newest uh, offerings, that sort of thing. So it's a very exciting time. And we don't get a lot of that in Hilo, you know, outside of the Mary Monarch for this kind of, uh, uh, that kind of excitement. Um, but also, yeah, you have a lot of local food trucks. Um, I know that, you know, I used to run a business right next to Mary Monarch. Um, I ran Suisun Fish Market. And Mary Monarch Week is a big week for us, too. We try, to, we try to tie in, you know, we do like a local Hawaiian plate and offer a special sales, that sort of thing. Because it's really an opportunity for a lot of uh, people around the state to discover uh, your product. But very beneficial. Now, of course, I would be remiss if we didn't ask you about the volcano mm -hmm. and its effects on... Hilo Town. First of all, for most people, they don't have a sense. Mm -hmm. Well, the Big Island is the Big Island because it's big. <laughs> so, how far are you from Kuna? Sure. Uh, so, my district, which is which is pretty, you know, tight for Big Island standards, it's uh, about. I mean. It's probably only about five to ten miles away from Puna, but the actual flow is probably closer to uh, 15, uh, 15 miles or so. Um, now, fortunately for the Hilo side, and unfortunately if you're in Kau or Kona or even on Oahu, uh, generally the trade winds take a lot of, uh, oh yes, you know, <laughs> take a lot of the, you know, I guess they're calling it the lays or the mm -hmm. fog, you know, kind of in the other direction. So we don't get uh, bad, you know, air quality. Um, maybe, maybe we get a serious vlog once every couple of weeks, but it's it's really not too bad that way. Um, and obviously, you know, for Hilo, you know, the effects that we're feeling really pale in comparison to uh, the people in Pune, who have uh, you know a lot of them who've had their homes destroyed or businesses disrupted and um, that sort of thing. Um, but you know, I think on the Hilo end, it's it's been mostly economic. You know, you're seeing a pretty substantial uh, drop off in you know reservations for hotels and restaurants and a lot of that tourist driven business. Um, and then, on, you know, on a practical level, um, my understanding is that most of the local housing supply, you know, that was available for affordable rentals and that sort of thing has really been occupied. And going into this upcoming fall semester, you know, if you're a student at UH Hilo uh, who doesn't want a dorm or something like that, I think you might be in a kind of rough situation that way. So, like I said, it's, it's, it's not life or death like it is, you know, for a lot of people in Puno, but, um, but we are seeing a substantial impact that way. Um, now. What about the the foliage with that mm. non the the mm, air mm -hmm. quality? Now I did talk to yeah. a couple of people who had their orchid business is gone. Right. It'll take years to come back. Uh, your senator has anthuriums and that was mm -hmm. pretty well damaged, just from the what is what is it that. Acid. Yeah, the, I think the, the, the sulfuric acid. Sulfuric or, yeah, acid. Like that. And yeah. it just burns the yeah. plants, not by touching, but in the mm -hmm. in the air. So, uh, do you uh, do you see any of that in Hilo Town? Uh, not so much. You know, I don't think it really extends to our district. Um, but what you are saying, yeah, I mean, they're depending on you know, some of the numbers you know that we've seen thrown around. As much as eighty percent of our local papaya uh, farms have been pretty irreparably harmed. Um, so that's something that we are starting to work on, is trying to find some sort of solution. There is a lot of state land, and there might be a way, you know, some uh, mechanism to try and 
kind of get that you know restarted, um, maybe closer to Hilo and that sort of thing. So that's something we are working on because a lot of people, yeah, they're losing their livelihood, um, or for others, it's their retirement. You know, a, a close family friend of mine operated a really big koi farm out there, a uh, very big aquaculture operation, and it's covered in about 30 feet of lava oh, yes. right now. So oh, yeah. very big concern. And uh, the papayas and the coffee. Yeah. Can does this well of course mm -hmm. on the big island there is land mm -hmm. but is it suitable to grow those kinds of things yeah it really depends um, on where you are on the island you know my understanding is that for a lot of these uh, crops the best soil is a little bit north of Hilo in that Hamakua area yes um, so a lot of that soil is actually uh, you know kind of taken from that Hamakua area and that's what a lot of people in Pune have been using, a lot of the farmers, is that Hamakua soil. Um, so, you know, it, we're, we're very geographically diverse, right? You know, you have Kau, which is borderline a desert, you know, and, yes. but very suitable for things like coffee and that sort of thing. Um, so that's obviously a concern, too, with the air quality, um, potentially like acid rain, is how that's going to impact that coffee crop. You know, Kau has some of the best coffee in the entire it world. Does. Uh, so it's something we're looking at, and but but thankfully that that you know that really high quality soil in Hamakua are pretty much unaffected. Uh, so there might be an opportunity to kind of get a lot of these businesses restarted. Oh, how, uh, yeah, because but that's still going to take time yeah. to come back, and, and probably especially so, yeah. the flowers because they're yeah ordered all over the world. Sure, and, you know, and my preference is. Uh, you know, the state steps in, in in some capacity. Well, you are the state. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it feels weird. Thing. Yeah, it feels weird, but yeah. you are the state, yeah. so that's... Yeah. It, it's something we're working on, um, and I think you're going you're gonna to see something come out of the next uh, month or two. Um, I know that, you know, myself, we are in uh, conversations and kind of getting a lot of people who have a lot of that experience together and trying to find some sort of solution. I, so I, you yeah. work with the community looking yeah. for those solutions. No, definitely. And how are they... Well, I, uh, does that include the Pune people from Pune to work with you, or mm -hmm. or is this just your district? No, uh, a little bit of both, you know. And this is something that, like I said, you know, Hilo. Other than you know a, a drop off in some of the business, we're we're relatively uh, unaffected, you know, when compared to a lot, uh, a lot of people in Pune. So, I think we've done a pretty good job of uh, letting that you know those Pune area legislators, whether they're um, you know Rep. Sam Ventura, Senator Ruderman, or even the council members out there. Maybe make sure that you know they're they're taking the lead on this, and we try to address their needs as they come up. How how can we provide, um, you know, some help yeah. that sort of thing? Wasn't it Ruderman <laughs> that has a farm? Uh, one, I, of the, I, one of them has yeah, a farm. I, yeah, I believe I believe so. And you know, he operates a very big uh, health food store. store you know? Yes, but I think he's he has mm. his own that he mm -hmm. in the store. Yeah. He, what happened with him? Do you know? Um, I'm not sure on like the actual like crop end of things, but I know that um, what he's been looking to do is uh, some form of relief, whether it's a, a land swap. There is a lot of vacant state land out there. Um, so he's looking for an opportunity to kind of relocate some of um, these communities that have been wiped out. And so that we still, same thing, maintain that kind of uh, Puna, you know, feel that community, that culture, um, but, you know, find a way to help these people, you know, get on their feet. Well, for anybody, again, that doesn't know, Puna is bigger than the island of Oahu. Mm -hmm. And that's a pretty big place. Right, right. And in fact, you could sit us there. Mm -hmm. So that's a lot of people, a lot of industry mm -hmm. that has to be moved. Yeah. And we we thought, we think. Right, right. So, so you're working with them to make all of this happen. Yeah, and, and I do think that you know, we, we have some exciting opportunities. Um, uh, re very recently, I had someone approach me, and, and we've just started uh, working out some of the details. But like I said, there, there's a very large piece of state land kind of just outside my district, um, kind of wedged between Hilo and Keao. And uh, there might be an opportunity there to, uh, you know, kind of transplant some of these papaya farmers and that sort of thing. It's not going to be easy, and it's going to take resources. Um, but I, I think we... Uh, when we have people that are struggling like that, I, I feel like that's part of the rule of government, you know. Well, that sounds like a very good rule of government. Usually, we don't hear that. <laughs> that it's so refreshing to hear your, well, most of the people, the legislators I've talked to from the Big Island, think differently than most politicians. Mm -hmm. they, 
they're still country people, even though they moved into the right, right. <laughs> state capital. But there's still this aloha, I guess is the right word, for the people, mm -hmm. the le legislators I've met from the Big Island. Mm -hmm. Now, you are running for re-election. Mm -hmm. So I want you to look right into that camera <laughs> and tell us why we should elect you. Okay. Yeah, um, I, I really feel that uh, you know the past two years have gone pretty well. I, I feel like I went in, I got a lot of really good advice, um, and part of that was go in and be quiet and learn as much as possible. Um, and I think that uh, the other legislators have responded pretty well to that. And I really feel that this year we managed to get a lot done for East Hawaii in particular. Um, whether that's you know funding the Puna ambulance, which had been pending for a long time, securing recurring uh, rat lungworm funding for UH Hilo. Um, a lot of the community projects um, and schools uh, that were funded with uh, new covered play court uh, for Kapi'olani Elementary, the intensive cardiology program for Hilo Medical Center, um, and obviously the KIA bill that we you know, just spoke about. So I feel like um, I've, I've done my part to start building those relationships, and I feel like Hilo is set up um, better because of that, and that's my hope at least uh, going forward. Oh. Chris, thank you so much for coming, and we wish you the very best in your election. And then the day after, well, two days after the election, give me a call. Sure. Let's find out all about it. That sounds How's good. That? All right. Thank you so much. Aloha. And